Hello friends. So in this particular tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can utilize Wago library to connect with MS SQL database directly from the PLC. So we are not going to utilize any third party application like Node-RAID or any third party libraries, the paid versions of the Codesys libraries are there to connect with SQL database, but we have an inbuilt library of the Wago. So this particular library works with the Wago devices. Okay, so as code, uh, Wago is now utilizing Codesys, so we can install the Wago device description and we can choose the Wago devices to connect with the PLC and then we can utilize this particular library. Okay, so we can go and go for the addition of the device by updating our device and we can select the Wago device description file. Okay, so once we have done, so I have what I have done, I have added a program. Uh, where I have set up the whole uh, sequence how exactly the MS SQL setup will work. So there are different function blocks which are present. So uh, the first one which will be utilized is the FB MS SQL login. So what we need to do is we can drag and drop uh, the boxes and we can choose uh, by going uh, uh, into the library and we can select uh, from which library we want the category and then we can select the login block okay login function block so as i already have so what uh, we can select and we can provide the instance and all those things and then we can configure all the pins okay so they are the pins which we need to configure so that's what i have already done so let me show you which library uh, we are using utilizing here so uh, we need to search for ms sql okay so once you search the wago ms app sql MS will come okay and we can add it so as it is already there in my library so it will not add but once you add uh, it is not there it will get added okay so once I will go into the MS SQL library and then we can see that there are different program operation units and inside that we have the function blocks okay so FB MS SQL login in this one if you see uh, the default configurations are also given which we can utilize so let's go back to the configuration part so the basic configuration which we need to do is we need to provide the port number we need to provide the host name or host details okay the username password so that's what i have configured it here in the variables okay so port number we have the username of the database to which we will connect and the password for that okay and which uh, database we are connecting so that database name we have to give so these are the basic uh, things which we have to configure okay so once we have configured this let me go online and once we download the program so once it got downloaded uh, let me go and put it into the run mode so okay so we can put it into the run mode and now Now we can see uh, that all the details are there okay and we have a uh, variable called as trigger okay so that trigger we will utilize so i'm just showing that right now if you see we have a plc database so i have just put a query uh, where there's a connection showing as a one because i'm connected to the sql uh, query management okay so uh, now uh, let me give a trigger from here so once i will give a trigger if everything goes correctly okay so now if you see uh, i'm just going to give a trigger command okay so i will right click and write values okay so let's see if everything goes correctly then you can see that the status will change to connected and if you run this particular query again then you can see that one more instance has got connection with the plc database so in this way what we did is first step is to log in to the database using the credential so that is how also we do it with any any sql database correct so that was the first step the next step is so if you log out uh, that is fine so it will say disconnected and again here if you see it will show that only one instance which is we have connected to the sql management server now uh, let me again give it the trigger to get connected so now we are connected now there are uh, two different function block uh, which we can utilize so 
one function block is the fb ms sql query so fb ms sql query is which will which we will utilize to do a query for the select okay so there is a query in uh, ms sql to select the details from the database okay so we utilize select uh, part through the fb ms sql query only apart from this no other uh, command will work uh, with the query uh, function block okay so there are different sections under which we need to provide the command so i am here providing the command as select star select star means select all from what is the table name so my table name for the uh, is the plc data so select star from plc data and now i will send the query but if you see i just got some error it is showing that the receive buffer is not as much what the query is trying to return okay so sometimes you you can you can get this particular error so why it is coming so i will show you that that the buffer in which it will receive if you see the size it is not that much what the size of the details are there in the table itself okay so maybe it has a lot of data which is not able to come into this okay so let me redefine this particular query so that a smaller segment of data we can get now select star from plc data and we can give here where a condition uh, where my value okay so let me set for the my value is equal to 10 okay so now let's execute this particular query and see whether we are able to get the result or not so it got disconnected so let me connect it back okay so it is connected and now let's run this particular query so now once we read okay so you can see that query got executed and it is showing a status as okay now if i go back where it will come the all the data correct so we have a variable defined in that one if you see the buffer size got increased and in this particular buffer size we have the data which is getting updated okay so in this way we can be able to utilize select query to retrieve the data based on certain condition or even if we have defined the uh, buffer size as big so it will come into that so now i have just put into the watch window so here we can see that the data has come into uh, this particular so it will show you the name which is the signal name so let me uh, go and then uh, all the details will be there in the column part and then in the rows the values will be there okay okay so let me uh, run a query here so that it will be easier the same query i will then select star from plc data okay where value equal to 10 so that's the query which we run from the plc correct so let's execute it now if you see we have the two set of data okay and here the name signal name which is showing there and the value so value is coming into the rows so you can see that these are the values which we have retrieved so as it is in bytes so uh, that's why it, uh, we need to convert from byte to real or if it is int then int so that conversion we have to internally okay so that you can utilize oscat library or you can utilize even the codices libraries are there to convert it from byte to real or any different data format okay so in this way we can be able to retrieve this data using select query so now let's check out another uh, function block uh, through which we can be able to insert update or append the data into the database so for that we need to utilize fb msql execute 
so execute uh, function block is utilized for different purposes so query will be utilized only for the select query and execute we will utilize to write or update anything into the database okay so uh, let's configure so we it also has the same thing it has the sql command but it will not have the uh, response part okay so uh, as we were getting the response part it will not have that uh, in which something has to be updated because there is nothing to be updated uh, we have to write the d data into the database correct so uh, sql command will be there and then again uh, the trigger will be there to uh, trigger this particular function block okay so uh, let me just clear it out okay so uh, once uh, this is done uh, then of course we need to download the code and then uh, we can be able to log in and send the command so uh, once the uh, code is downloaded and we're in the run mode then we will go to the sql command okay so here instead of select uh, we will utilize insert command to insert any data into the database okay so insert into which table plc data so that is our table name insert into plc data then what we need to insert so we need to give the details here so the query remains as uh, we, we do in the ms sql itself query manager so it will remain the same way we will do okay so we need to provide the uh, column name into which uh, we need to put the value so we have two column there one is the signal name another is the value so that's what in the second command i'm putting insert into plc data inside bracket signal name comma value now here uh, it will come a little tricky part okay so uh, we need to focus on this particular section how exactly uh, the value or the command we need to write to insert all the data into the database okay so if you see here i'm giving here values okay so signal name is a string so that is fine uh, p102 the name i am giving pi102 okay and the value is 10 and let's try to execute this okay and let's see what exactly status we get so if you see uh, we got an error okay so why exactly this particular error is coming uh, because our query which we have written is not written in the correct format because we have to write in into a certain format to get it executed if we are not writing if any small mistake is there it will not uh, insert data or it will not execute that particular query itself okay so uh, even if you see i changed few things but still it is not working so let's uh, go and uh, see solve this how exactly we have to write the query so uh, now let me remove uh, this particular parameter from here so what we will do is uh, from the sql command uh, number three uh, we will keep here only the values okay and then the uh, another part of the values which we have to write we will put into the next uh, set of the array so number three and here if you see uh, our signal name is a string okay so signal name is a string so it has to be given the name has to be given with the help of dollar sign okay now with help of dollar sign we will uh, close it using dollar sign the pi102 and the value is as it is a number so that is fine we can give directly so now once you uh, give this uh, parameter and click on enter then you can see that dollar sign goes away so that is how exactly it has to be done so uh, if we're not doing then it will not work okay so now as we have collected so you can see that uh, we get okay message it means query has got executed now if i go into uh, the sql server management and run the query here itself where signal name equal to pi102 okay so let me close it into bracket and then execute the query so you will get all the pi102 
and uh, I will just give the value what we set is was the value equal to 15 okay so you can see that this particular value got updated here so as we inserted so it got inserted okay so same way uh, we can uh, do so let me uh, change it so that uh, we can say that it is working as expected so i will change it to 55 and execute the query it is okay so everything is fine and let's change it to 55 and execute it so so the value is getting inserted into the database okay so in this particular manner any of the type of the query okay which we have to execute or write into the database we can utilize the fb ms sql execute block okay so using this we can be able to insert update append and delete okay so these four functions or these four commands will work thanks for watching that's all for this video uh, see you in the next one